If you had the power to redesign Europe's response to refugees, what would you do? Hmm. I think, well, first, um, I would um, make sure that people have access to a fair um, and timely um, asylum procedure. I think this is really like the basic. Um, second, I would um, definitely make sure that people can arrive on the islands without taking um, huge risks to have you know, a safe way for people to access Europe um, and to ask for asylum. Um, and third, I think also the living condition. Um, I would make sure that you know, uh, 65,000 people is not that much in Greece today. Um, mm. So you have refugee camps in many other countries that are much bigger than that. Mm. Um, and I, I think that um, yeah, Greece and the EU should be able to provide decent living conditions for, for those people. The impression I have is that the people who live here in Lesbos have been very welcoming for the refugees. Is that your assessment? I think generally yes. Mm. Um, this is what we, what we can see. Uh, generally the people have been quite uh, welcoming, trying to help the refugees and so on. So you have the public in Lesbos who are responding generously mm -hmm. to the arrival of, say, 500 or 1,000 people a month. And yet the island is quite poor, it seems. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because Australia is quite rich mm. and we've been very unfriendly to people who've <laughs> arrived in much smaller numbers. The Greek people are better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cannot say that, but uh, yeah, it's true that so far we have seen a, a quite uh, good reception of, of the host communities. Recently there's been an agreement made between the European Union and mm -hmm. Turkey yeah. to send people back to Turkey if mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. And of course, behind us here, we can see the Turkish coastline, it's that mm -hmm. close. So how is that arrangement working out as you see it? Um, before this agreement, Greece was mainly a transit country. Yeah, so we had hundreds of thousands of people transiting um, and then going through the, the Balkan route, the Eastern Balkan route to Europe. At first they closed the border with Macedonia Freedom and the, the Balkan route was closed. And second, um, they signed this uh, agreement uh, with Turkey. Um, which basically um, is blocking people to, to enter. And so this means that if you close it in the north and you close it here, you have in the middle about 65,000 people stuck in Greece. Mm. With this agreement, what the EU says, we did this to save people from a dangerous journey. And, and so this agreement is actually a good thing because thanks to this agreement, we have saved a lot of lives. Mm. We've so heard that political <laughs> argument before. That's a very strong <laughs> political argument, but yeah. what we say and what we see is that this actually argument um, is not correct because it's not because you close the door um, mm. that you actually um, work on the cause of why people are leaving. Mm. Um, and so this means that you put those people in danger by doing that mm. uh, because the danger is still there. Um, of course, so the other problem with it is Turkey has not signed the Refugees Convention. Mm -hmm, There's correct. nothing to stop Turkey from sending people back to Syria. Correct. And the idea of the Refugees Convention was to share the burden. Yes. Uh, instead of having countries immediately around the trouble spot yep. take all the burden. What are the countries around the trouble spot? Well, it's Turkey, uh, Jordan and mm -hmm. Lebanon. They're all taking mm -hmm. many hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees while the rest of the world says, don't come here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you have more than three million uh, refugees in Turkey. So, um, so yeah, we don't think it's an, an agreement, let's say, that is actually saving life. Actually, mm. it's the contrary. It puts people um, in danger mm. and it's generated lots of uh, protection issues for uh, lots of people. You have sought to illegally enter Australia by boat. If you have a valid claim, you will not be resettled in Australia. You will never live in Australia. What's your view about governments here or elsewhere in Europe using deterrence against refugees? This is what 
it's actually happening uh, now. I yeah. mean, uh, the, the procedures to get asylum, all the system that has been put in place since the Utrecht deal on the islands in Greece to, uh, you know, uh, restrict geographically the movement of people uh, fleeing uh, a situation of violence or asking for protection. Mm. Um, this is already a deterrence mm. uh, as such, and this is, uh, yeah. It seems harsh to deter people who are trying to escape persecution. Uh, definitely, mm. uh, but this is against the Refugee Convention, this is against human rights, um, and I mean, despite the fact that the EU leader says that the Utrecht deal is not against human rights, <laughs> it actually is. Yes. Uh, I don't think that people come here, I mean, if you are a mother or, or a father and, and you decide to take a boat, um, everyone knows that those boats are dangerous and that there is a high probability that um, you, you could die actually by doing that. Mm. As a mother, as a father, how can you take this risk if you are not, you know, uh, fleeing s a serious condition in your home country? Mm. This yes. means that the fear that you have in your home country is bigger than the fear of, you know, uh, taking a small boat to reach Europe. Yes, it's a mark of desperation that you're willing exactly. to take that risk. Exactly, mm. yeah, definitely. As a number of people have said to us, these are human beings who need help. You don't deter them from seeking help, surely? No, definitely, and this is mm. the right of um, anybody um, mm. to have access to a fair um, asylum process, um, to have access to protection, uh, to have access to uh, you know, uh, living condition. To have access to the possibility of hope for your own future. Of course.